Hey, welcome back to Rise of Daz and Marcus Plays DuckTales. In the last episode, we cleared Transylvania and said hello to Magica Dispel, who is one of my favorite villains from the show. She was always one of my favorite villains, just like from that era. Um, or at least like, if we're going by like my favorite villain overall from like Disney Afternoon, it would probably have to be like Megavolt from uh, Darkwing Duck. Like, he is such, like, a loser, and, like, I fucking love him. He's a loser in, like, the affectionate kind of way. What the fuck is that thing at the bottom right? Looks like a weird snail with... Oh, hey, there's Gyro. This is the place. I can feel all those diamonds singing to me. <laughs> and it's a right pretty song, too. Gyro, I thought you said this winch was brand new. It was. It's an unbreakable diamond tether, Mr. McDuck. I made it myself. So long as you didn't use any of my diamonds to do the job. Oh, that's a lot of dudes running out. Your lunch break isn't for two hours yet. We heard voices down there, Mr. McDuck. Strange, g g ghostly voices. Nonsense. There aren't any. The, 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 the voice is doing there. <laughs> Whatever you say, Mr. McDuck, but your mine is haunted. You finish digging it. Oh, you want anything wow, all right. to do it yourself. And believe me, if I hear voices doing there, I'll give them a good talking to. Now, you stay here, boys. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. The rock bottom, Mr. McDuck. This mine shaft goes down for miles. I'll keep that in mind, Jaro. Oh, does that mean we're going to be playing Minecraft? Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm a very avid fan of Minecraft, by the way. Ah, if I can only play Minecraft again. It's been a while since I actually played. Because for one thing, I do have Minecraft for the PC, but... Oh my god, it's been... It's been ages since I ever used uh, my, my uh, laptop for gaming. Like, it's so slow. Um, like, it's so slow. Don't ever use a laptop if you want to, you know, game or anything. Because I would, because uh, I'm not a PC player. I can tell you that much right now. And the reason why I'm not a PC player is because I don't have a gaming PC. I just have, like, a PC that I use for editing. It's not even a PC, it's just like a, like an HP laptop. So, I only use that for editing, and by the way, when it renders on here, my god, does it, does it drag down the bandwidth. Like, my god. It pretty much lags the whole damn computer. So, yeah. Gaming on this thing? Impossible. I could not do it. But I, I, do, I did play Minecraft for a while on um, my Xbox 360. Which, by the way, like has been like undergoing like severe problems for like for the longest time. Um, it keeps saying that it overheats. But here's the thing, right? Um, I actually like disassembled my Xbox at one point, and yeah, I cleared out like um, a lot of dust from it. Apparently, um, apparently it still overheats. Because here's my logic, right? If it was over, it was if it was like constantly overheating, then that must mean like there's a lot of dust and shit inside that's like, you know, causing it to overheat and stuff. So I did that, but yet the damn thing still overheats. I don't know if it's probably because like it's been worn down because of like the fact that I've had that Xbox for like. Oh man, say maybe uh, nine or eight years now. Uh, but it probably has to do with something with that. But whatever the case, like my Xbox, like, like probably just like maybe an hour or thirty minutes, and it will like crash on me. It'll give me like not an entire red ring of death, but like half a ring. Which means that 
it overheated and it just shut down on me. And like the thing is, it's not even that hot. I mean, it is a bit warm on the backside, but it's always been like that. And like the Xbox 360, like I know has like run for like much longer in the past. It's yeah, it, it's definitely run much longer than that in the past. I can tell you that much right now. But I just don't know what's wrong with it, and I would get a new Xbox 360, or I would get an Xbox One, or or at the very least, um, an, uh, an, a new Xbox 360. But I'm just too broke for one right now. But I definitely do not want to sell any of my Xbox games because, for one thing, the whole reason why I got my capture device to begin with back in the day, probably like back in 2011 or 10 was so I could, you know, make Let's Play episodes off my Xbox 360. It wasn't until recently that I uh, finally got my capture device to start working. So, it's kind of a bittersweet thing really, at, uh, now at the end. Because the cables for the Xbox 360, um, they're pretty much like they're pretty much like, well, rather, the cable. The there's like two different sets of different cables that I could plug into on my capture device. One are uh, composite cables, which are pretty much the standard uh, red, yellow, and white cables. But then you also got the uh, the uh, the component cable. Uh, wait, I got that wrong. Composite cables. Oh wait, I got that wrong. Fuck. Component cables are red, yellow, and white. The uh, the composite cables are like the blue, the green, uh, the red, like all that all that stuff. So like my capture device is pretty much like not necessarily solely built for Xbox 360 gaming, but it's pretty much damn near it. So like, if I, because pretty much like, the only way that I can pretty much like, because I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone is knows by now that like, all my videos so far on this channel have been like in in standard format. Like they're not all widescreen or anything like that. However, um, the only way that I could ever get them in HD is if I buy even more expensive shit in order to like combat that fuck. Oh wait, never mind, I got it. So the only way that I can really get some HD gaming going is if, you know, I played some games on my Xbox 360. Which I can because, as previously mentioned, my Xbox 360 tends to overheat a lot. And the Wii U sure as fuck doesn't have any HD cables like that. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, shit, Marcus, like, you know, doesn't your capture device also support HDMI? No, not at all. Which is kind of the main reason why I don't think copyright at all has been detecting my videos just yet. Because the way this works is that HDMI cables... Because... All right. The, the the way that like this works is that um, HDMI like is like easier to detect for copyright infringement, especially on like gaming videos because those have been like been detected as copyright a lot recently on YouTube. But with my capture device, it's like harder to detect. So like if you go to any other gaming video, it'll say like oh like the ga the game that this guy's playing is. Um, like Dead or Alive, or this game is Far Cry Prime, uh, Far Cry Primal. So, I've been kind of getting away with that because of my capture device. So, my capture device, like, I guess is pretty good for, like, not getting detected by copyright infringement, which is very good and very much appreciated, so long as, like, I don't even know if, like, it applies to like anything like being played like any copyrighted songs and games 
And I just fucking got crushed by that boulder. So, I don't know yet. Yet, I do not, I do not want to try risking it at all. So, there's this game that I've been wanting to play for like a while on the PS2. It's called um, Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. And that game has like a lot of copyrighted music in it. And I'm not exactly sure if like my capture device will prevent it from from detecting like you know the uh, the de uh, what's it fucking called the the whatever the 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 copyright ID thing. So I don't know if like my capture device will block it from that. Probably not. But then again, like, it's been going well so far. It hasn't detected, um, it hasn't detected any music from Kingdom Hearts yet. Because I remember when I was uploading the first episode of Kingdom Hearts, I was like, oh god, it's gonna, like, spot me for using the, um, for using the beginning song to Kingdom Hearts. The, um, the Simple and Clean song. Because I remember, like, a couple of different Let's Plays I've been watching have that song. And they got hit hard with copyright. So, like, whenever you see, like, a Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts, they'll probably... Like, more often than not, they'll probably just skip through the, um... Why the fuck did I do that again? God damn it, I'm such an idiot. But, whenever you see, like, a Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts, odds are whenever, like, they're going through the intro movie, They'll probably just skip right over through it because of the fact that Simply and Clean is copyrighted. So... Basically... As much as I like to play Xbox 360 games, right now it's kind of impossible for me to do that, especially with the fact that my Xbox, like, keeps crashing on me and stuff, and... And, like, it's been a while since I've, like... Well, the main goal for me is, like, to get an Xbox One. Because it is somewhat backwards compatible, but I also still want to get an Xbox 360 just to play some old games that I have on there. Because... Uh, let me think about that for a second. Because I know, like... Because I know I have a couple different games on the hard drive that I want to play. Uh, for example, I have... An HD version of Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. And I also have uh, a couple of other games on the hard drive as well. Skyrim is one of them. I don't know if I'll ever do like a full Let's Play of Skyrim. It's like... That's going to be like even longer than the Kingdom Hearts Let's Play, if you can believe that. There's a Let's Play that I've been watching on Vintage Beef's channel. And that has been, like, spanning, like, for, like, 70 episodes. So, fuck that noise. There's no way in hell I would be ever... I would ever do, like, a Let's Play of Skyrim. Because, for one thing, like... Especially on, like, Let's Plays like that, it's easy. It's very, very easy to, like, get bored of it right away. But the thing about Vintage Beef is that, like... Just to go off on a tangent here, uh, Vintage Beef, I have to say, is like one of the most relaxing like video game channels I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's kind of like the Bob Ross syndrome where there's something so gentle about, or not really gentle, but like so laid back about Vintage Beef's Let's Plays that like I can like do like a whole bunch of other stuff in the background while I'm watching this, like. Um, I could be writing, I could be, you know, doing homework if I was still in school. Like, I, I could be doing, like, an assortment of different things, but... It's just, it's just one of those Let's Plays where... You know, you could pretty much, like, multitest to do anything, really. And just have it playing in the background. And the, the Let's Play of Skyrim that he did... Like, is a really good example of that. I can't really say the same thing with a Let's Play like... I can't really say the same thing about the Let's Play of uh, Pokemon Fire Red with um, the Game Grumps. Because for that one, it's like more focused on comedy. And 
Just because of the fact that, like, there's so many episodes of those, like, they've been, like, spanning, like, over a hundred of those episodes of Pokemon Fire Red. Because of that, it's, like, kind of... I wouldn't necessarily say it wears you down, because you can easily, like, keep watching it and watching it. It's just that you have to, like... Not really pace yourself, but... I don't know, like... It, it, get, it leaves you intrigued in order to like keep going with watching it, but it's like one of those where like you feel like you have to pay attention to it. So it's not all like vintage beefs where you could just like pretty much do anything in the background and like you won't miss out on much. You know what I mean? I mean, with Game Grumps, like, it's like each, it's like each episode of, like, um, it's like each episode of Pokemon Fire Red is, like, such a joy to watch, and, like, I just don't want to do anything else in the background because it's so damn funny. So, that's what I'm getting at here. Whoops. So, where was I even going with this? Oh, lengthy Let's Plays. I mean, yeah, with the Kingdom Hearts Let's Play, I do have to admit, like, I don't think I've ever commented before on, like, how it feels to be doing Let's Play for, like... Because, so far, it's been, like, probably a month since I started this Let's Play channel. And I can tell you that much, like... Producing Let's Play every day has been honestly kind of hard. I'm not gonna lie. It's been hard to like keep up with commentary and all that stuff, but I mean, hey, I mean, if you're able to, you know, put up with... If you're able to put up with editing almost every day, I mean, not, not necessarily like you don't have to upload every day, but I feel like I have to. It's just me. Because for one thing, I don't want this Let's Play uh, Let's Play channel to grow cold and like not produce anything for a while. I just want to like keep producing content more and more. So like, you know, it, it's like easier for me to get back into the swing of things. You know, it's like kind of like a new habit, really. But you know, if you're able to you know do commentary and play games at the same time and have a witty and funny personality, then I'd say go for it. But for me, like, it's kind of like a really weird change. Well, not, not necessarily like a weird change at all, but like, it's like... It's pretty much like taking on like a new lifestyle, really. And it, it does wear on you like a little bit. Like, I will have to say like... You do have to like you know, keep talking about stuff, otherwise, like, I guess you'll lose your audience a bit. Not, like, literally lose your audience, but, like, uh, kind of put them off guard. I can't really find the right word for it. Like, see, right now, like, I'm struggling to, like, find some commentary to this. But, yeah, it's... It's a, it's it's fun. It's fun to do a let's play. And <laughs> the easy part about doing a let's play, playing the game itself. I mean, the, well, not really. Playing the game itself is honestly kind of hard, really. You would think that this would be the easier part of the job, but honestly, that's not the case. If you can believe that. Because when you're playing a game, not only do you have to focus on, like, not making the episode boring, but you also have to worry about uh, your commentary as well, and as well as finding stuff to do in the actual game to keep the pace going. So, it is, it is kind of hard. But do I recommend it if you have the materials for it? I'd say go for it. It's a, it really depends on like what kind of personality you have. If you're like kind of quiet and like 
kind of introverted and like don't like to open up like about a lot of things, then um, I mean it's not too late to to try opening up. I could definitely say that much. But if you're if you're able to if you're able to put your thoughts out and uh, all this sort of stuff, then yeah, definitely go for it. It's more about like doing what you love and like enjoy doing it. I can definitely say right now, like I enjoy doing Let's Plays. I think it's like a really great thing to be, you know, kind of putting myself out really. Like just my, just putting out my personality and like who I am and what are my interests. It's kind of like, it's kind of like doing like an eHarmony video almost, only like it's not as desperate I don't think. I don't know, I never did like an eHarmony video, although um, I will say this, um, I'll be honest with you, I did um, make a Tinder account at one point. And I could def uh, definitely tell you right now, I did meet one person, and I did not get into a relationship at all. I'm still not in a relationship. Um, but it's a weird thing to be meeting a person whom you definitely want to get to know, but deep, in, deep down inside, you know that's not going to happen um, as far as you... Uh, you being with them on a relationship level goes. Because there was a video I watched recently of where this video was discussing whether or not Tinder was technically killing love. And I could definitely, uh, I could definitely say right now I wholeheartedly agree with that video because after trying out Tinder, um, the thing about Tinder was when I was using it, it was growing as kind of like an addiction where it was this experience of where I wanted to meet someone and the thought of meeting someone was really my addiction towards it. It was that emotional need that I felt like I needed to press on with Tinder and that became like, like a huge obsession with me like in, in secrecy. And it's something that I can honestly say I was not very proud of because I can definitely tell you this much, it definitely killed a it definitely killed a friendship that I had with this person. I, I won't go into that much detail with it, but yeah, let's just say that like there was this person who I, I did like, but you know, was away for some time. And it was because of Tinder where it was like the temptation of getting a Tinder account where you know, it, it pretty much like kind of killed it in that respect. And while I was using it, it did not help at all with like fulfilling that emotional need because this person was like away for like a while and still is away actually. So I could definitely say right now, like if you're definitely looking for love uh, or anything of the sort in your life, definitely don't go to Tinder. Otherwise, like. The only thing that you'll be hanging on to is just, like, the feeling of emptiness. Like, the feeling of emptiness that you have right now if you are lusting for love. Um, that's the same exact feeling that you're going to get with Tinder. If not, it's going to, like, progress even worse. <laughs> I, I kind of equate it to, like, the one ring where the longer you hold it, the more and more it's going to, like, kill you inside, and the more and more you're going to be obsessing over it. And that's exactly how I can describe Tinder. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry to get real with you right there in a fucking kid's game. Oh my god. So, <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Um, <laughs> in the next episode, we're going to be um, tackling the Himalayas. So... I'll see you guys till next time. Peace.